so Jimmy's car is ready. So we're gonna go pick it up. And then he's gotta go to work, and I've gotta go back home. So this is what happened. Yesterday, eight caches published. There it is. Up there. Eight caches published yesterday. We went real quick to try and get the first finds. Didn't get any of them. Well, last night at around four in the morning, five more published. And uh, this one, according to the website, hasn't been found yet. So, let's check. Nope. It was found already. They just haven't logged it online yet. So it looked like there was no finds. There's actually two. Oh well. So I left Reading at about 11.30. It's now 1.15. And I've gone about 15 miles. So at that rate, it's going to take me a real long time to get home. But I stopped in Cottonwood and found about 10 or so caches. Which is just right off the, you know, just right south of Reading, 50 miles or so. But now I'm just traveling, so I'll get some distance and then I'll probably stop somewhere else and find some more. I didn't record finding any. I probably should have. I'll record later. 100 feet this way. So far, they've all been pretty easy finds for me. I've been able to just walk up to it, look for less than a minute, and find it. So, it's been good. I've been getting them pretty quickly. Haven't been losing a whole lot of time. It's a little creek. Just jump across. Ah. I'm guessing it's in this tree. Around the back side, probably in here. Yes. Right there. See? There it is. Awesome. So I'm just off the side of uh, I-5 southbound. Just at a rest area. And I just thought, you know, I'll just get this one while I'm here. It's actually a pretty good uh, camouflage. So it's about the size of a 35 millimeter film canister, so I was thinking it was maybe this bush, because that's where the coordinates kind of tell me to go, is over that way. But they're a little bit off, and it's actually on this tree somewhere. You can see there's not really many places to hide it, unless you hang it way up high or something. But, but there's this little split, and you can look in there and see it looks like a stick. But, you pull out the stick, aha, there's a log in there. It's cool. It's about 3.45, so that is uh, 11.30, four and a half, no, about, about four hours, and I've gone, I've just left Red Bluff, so I've gone from Redding to Red Bluff, if you want to look that up on a map, see how far I got in four hours. It's going to take a long time to get home. If I had driven the whole way, I would have been home half an hour ago. Not more than that. An hour and a half ago. But no. I'm still south of Red Bluff. Just a little bit. But it's okay. Because I got the day off of work. I was supposed to go into work at uh, 5. Which is only in about an hour and 15 minutes. So even if I drove all the way from this point, I wouldn't make it. But it's okay. Because I got the day off of work. One extra day. So... But I think I've found like close to 20 caches now on the way. That's why it's taking so long. But anyway, I'm gonna drive for a little bit. Maybe find some more a little bit further down the road. Talk to you later, bye. All right, this one kind of has a story behind it, so I'll try and film it. Uh, basically, what happened is um, the owner has said that nature has kind of taken over and has camouflaged it really, really well. And only one person has found it um, since 2009. And there's been like four or five people who couldn't find it. So I thought, why not? I'm out here. It'll be a while before I'm out here again. I'll try and find it. So we'll see how this goes. 60 feet away now. 
And there's a river here, so it, it may have been washed away like some people think, or maybe it's just really, really well camouflaged. So let's see. Here's the area right here. Like a box of towels or something. And it does look like this bank has kind of fallen away. So, I don't know. South is towards the river. That way. That way. So, 15 feet south will put you into an area where the river has eroded the riverbank. So it probably is in the river and floated away. But anyway, oh well. One that's not there. Well, two now that aren't there. That's not too bad. So, let's go find more. It's now just about five o'clock and I'm in Corning. So again, check the map. From Reading to Corning in uh, four and a half hours. No, more than that, five and a half hours. And I'm gonna just count real quick how many I've uh, found. 27 so far. I found 27. So I'm gonna just continue what I'm doing until I get bored or it gets too dark and cold. Talk to you later. That last one I just did, that was pretty cool. I liked how they did that one. Basically it was a uh, rumbling. It was what's uh, okay. It was hidden inside of a barber shop, right? And in the description it said, you know, come to this barber shop between these hours on these days and ask for the gatekeeper. So I was kind of like, all right, what is this? It's kind of weird. So I went in there and he said, hey bud, how's it going? And I was like, it's all right. Uh, is the gatekeeper here? He's like, he sure is. Hold on a minute. And then he went and he grabbed the, the cash from a, a cupboard. And then he handed it to me and said, here you go. So, you know, I never, I didn't have to actually look for it, but I was kind of confused. Like, do I actually go into the barbershop and ask for a gatekeeper or what do I do? So I just asked him and that was, that was what you had to do. So it was cool. Signed, it got a trackable out of it too. So, yeah. Interesting. I've never seen one like that before. It's a cool idea. But anyway, I'm gonna go on the freeway for a little bit. Look at these clouds. It's been dumping rain all around here, but it hasn't been raining on me. So anyway, here it is, Sacramento, 113, and I'm about 60 miles past that. So. There was another one just off the freeway, so I had to stop. Oh, <laughs> time for work. No, it isn't. Look, you can see it from here, right there. I'm probably gonna try and hide it better than that. Okay, right now I'm going to one that was specifically made for trading uh, coins and and things. It's called the International Coin and mystery exchange. So, um, check it. Should be right over here somewhere. Oh, there it is. You gotta get over this barbed wire fence, or just go under it, I guess. Put one here. Okay, and that's actually, the off-ramp that I pulled over on. Because once you go past this point, you can't go backwards on this road to get back here. So you have to get off right there. But yes, that is it. And uh, I'll show you the coin I'm dropping in it. I'm dropping this coin. It's pretty detailed. It's got a big keyhole on it. The other side looks like that. Kind of cool. It's a sign. 
But anyway, I'm gonna go log this and trade some coins. My information said that there was one in there, but I didn't see anything, so I don't know. Oh well, that's okay. So I'm at this place for a cache, and I was looking over here at the clouds and the sun, and you can see like beams coming down. It looks really cool coming over. Like over there looks cool, and it's like that gets in the way, but. It just looks really cool with your actual vision. Um, so I used my good camera, my DSLR, and I set up some exposure bracketing. Took three pictures at uh, one uh, one stop uh, for each picture, one up and one down. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, merge those into an HDR image and it would look Hopefully kind of like what I see, but we'll see what happens. Um, I guess I can put that picture up. Whatever it is, it's going to show right here. I'm getting a little closer to home. I think I'm almost halfway. Huh. And it's been six hours. It's a, usually a two and a half to three hour drive. I've spent twice that that long, I might even have to wait it. But anyway, I'm having fun, I'm getting tons of fines. This is like 30 something now. Like high 30s. This is a old road. Um, this is a regular size with no trackables, but it's okay, I'm close now. Well, that's kind of... There it is. Haha, <laughs> right there. Found. Log attempt. Found. Done. Map. Now I get to open it. I don't know if I've ever even showed you what's inside. I'll show you what's inside this one. Okay, so we've got... Logbook. A uh, playing card. Three of clubs, that's a very common uh, magic combination. Post-it notes, you got a D-cell battery, two D-cell batteries, not diesel, D-cell. A sticker for something, what's that hang like? 24B line, whatever. That was from the Sundance Film Festival. Band-Aids. Plastic silverware, toothpicks, some useful stuff, fishing string, a compass that kind of works, an army man, pencil sharpener, anyway, that's what's in this one. Oh, it's Aerosmith. Ah. Okay, I'll sign the log now. Okay, I've been on I-5 southbound. And you know sometimes they have rest areas, but they're only accessible from one side of the freeway. And so, you know, you, you pull off the freeway, you can stop and rest, and you leave the rest area, and you continue the same way you were going on the freeway. And there's no way to get to the other side. Well... I'm headed southbound, and there's a cache on the northbound rest area, and I am south of it right now, so I could get back on I-5 north, get off at the rest area and find that one, but then I'd have to continue even more north to find a, a, a spot to turn around, which is going to be a couple more miles north. So it's going to like, you know, I've already been down, they have to go up and back down again. But oh well, I'll do it. I'm here at the northbound rest area and the cache is that way. Heading north. About two or three miles northern of where I would, uh, just was. So now I'm getting off the freeway. Five south. 
back on. You hear that thumping? Every time I turn, it's a, uh, a metal pipe that I found. It's in the back of the truck, so every time I turn, it rolls around back there. Now I'm heading back south again. Look what I just found. I forgot that I got three of them. I was just sitting next to me for about three hours. So it's a little soggy, a little cold. But if I let it sit there anymore, it's just going to get worse, right? The sun has now set and it's getting dark. Still some light over there, but it's pretty dark right now. So I'm probably gonna uh, find less caches and just do more driving so I can get back home. Cause it's more fun in the day anyway. So I've already found probably close to 40. So that's good for one day. So it is now about eight o'clock. And if you take the time and add 30 minutes, Basically, that's how long I've been driving, so 8 o'clock is 8 hours, 30 more minutes, 8 and a half hours, and I've gone uh, pretty much 100 miles in 8 and a half hours, so that's a little more than 10 miles per hour average speed. That's pretty slow. I've got 60 more miles to go. But I think I'm just gonna go the rest of the way. It'll be better. I've found enough caches today. Unless there's one that's real easy, like right off the side of the road. I might go for it. 